Hi there. Welcome to TV Coast to Coast. This is our weekly chat where TV critics from around the country get together via the magic of Skype. Sometimes it's more magical than others, uh, but always fingers crossed um, to talk about some of the things that are going on in TV. And uh, our group today includes me. I'm Christy Turnquist. I'm with the Oregonian newspaper and OregonLive.com in Portland, Oregon. And we have Vicki Hyman from New Jersey Star Ledger and NJ.com and Mark DeWidziak from the Cleveland Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com. And as usual, we've got kind of a, an eclectic trio of shows to talk about this week. Um, we've got a show about a zombie. We've got a show that's harder to kill than a zombie. And we've got a show that, as far as I know, doesn't have anything to do with zombies, but has kind of a gory-sounding title. But we'll get to that. Um, so <laughs> I'll kick things off by talking about that zombie show that refuses to die, Community. Um, yeah, obviously it's got a, a, a cult fan base that just refuses to let this show go off into the sunset, no matter how many problems arise, um, and there have been some. It ran for five seasons on NBC. The ratings were never great, um, but the quality most, mostly was really good, except for season four when its creator, Dan Harmon, was not involved in doing the show because he and NBC had a famously um, sort of messy parting of the ways. Uh, but then Harmon came back for season five, and it seemed like that was kind of a nice way to send the show out. Um, but it's now back again, courtesy of Yahoo. Uh, Yahoo is one of the streaming uh, platforms now that are trying to introduce original content, which seems to be what everybody's going after, from Netflix to Amazon to Hulu. Um, and this is kind of Yahoo's highest profile thing yet. So now we have the much desired season six of community don't know if we'll get season six in a movie as the fans have been calling for now based on the first two episodes and new episodes stream on yahoo every tuesday i would say much as i like community much as i at times have loved community i'm not convinced that community really needed to be revived the, the first episode is quite clever and really has the the dan Harmon stamp of lots of insider pop culture references lots of jokes self-aware jokes about the show it's very meta um and and it's funny if you're a fan of the show you're gonna laugh and enjoy it but the cast as you can see is somewhat diminished we've lost donald glover and yvette nicole brown um chevy chase left a while ago can't say i miss him sorry sorry chevy um but you know th it just does feel like it's a bit of a diminished community even with the addition of new characters played by um keith david and paget brewster it just feels like they're trying a little too hard to sort of, you know, keep this thing resuscitated when maybe it, it should have just been allowed to quietly go off and be remembered as the great show that it was. Um, as I say, the first episode is good. I thought the second episode felt off to me. It just didn't feel quite right, um, which doesn't make me wildly enthusiastic for the rest of them. I'll probably watch them because I do love community, but it, it really does feel like kind of a, a pale imitation of the show that it once was. Um, now, speaking of uh, original content on new platforms, Vicki, you are going to talk about yet another ambitious new show from Netflix. Why don't you, why don't you take it away, Vicki? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to be talking about Bloodline, which um, uh, drops on Friday on Netflix. It is a very dark and very twisty family drama. It's also a thriller. It does both extremely well. It's a family. It's about a family in Key West who run a thriving happened. resort and have been sort of muckety mucks in the community for a very long time. But of course, their upstanding reputations must mask dark secrets. Um, the parents are played by Sissy Spacek and Sam Shepard, who we are always happy to see and always happy to see together. Um, and they have four children, one of whom, Danny, is the black sheep. And the drama starts when home for a family celebration. But um, things quickly go sideways. The, the drama initially at least focuses on the tension between Danny and his three siblings, who are torn to varying degrees between walking him back into the fold and protecting their parents from more disappointment or protecting their family from whatever secrets Danny may unearth. Um, there are four things that I really loved about it. One is that Danny, who's played by the Australian actor Ben Mendelsohn, who I was not familiar with, but has apparently been knocking around as sort of like sociopath level act, uh, characters for a while. Um, he's truly a cipher. You, you feel sorry for him sometimes, he seems really vulnerable. And then sometimes you fear him and you really are like, oh my God, this is, this is a bad dude. Um, the writers really have you going back and forth about what his true motives are. 
Um, the second is that the narrative plays with time um, to really ratchet up the tension. There's a uh, time shift in the first episode. You're not sure for a long time whether it's flashbacks or flash forwards. Um, and it's like the missing true detective, the affair, and um, how to get away with murder. And and also, as Mark pointed out to me earlier, like um, damages, um, the people who created damages created the show. Um, there's this, they're, they're showing two different narratives, one in one time period, one another time period. And you know that how the story is going to end, and you know it's not going to end well, but you're utterly absorbed in how the characters get to that point. Um, three, it's really refreshing to see a show that is not filmed in British Columbia. Um, it really makes the most of this sort of soupy Key West setting, um, sort of like um, what True Detective did for Southern Louisiana. And four, the cast is just spectacular. So Ben Mendelsohn, who I've mentioned, is really wonderful. Kyle Chandler, I mean, I love Kyle Chandler. Um, he's the second oldest son. He plays this straight arrow named um, John, who's the narrator of the piece. Um, he really grounds the whole thing. Um, another revelation is Norbert Leo Butts, who, if you're familiar with him, you're probably familiar with him from um, Broadway. He was uh, he starred in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. He known from comic roles, and he really shows a lot of range here. He's playing the youngest um, brother, who is sort of a class clown, also has a terrible temper, and he's the one who's most resistant to Danny being home. Um, all the siblings, which also include Linda Cardellini as uh, the the one sister. Um, they all have their own secrets that they're hiding from one another, and Danny sort of acts as the sort of catalyst to bring those um, secrets to the fore. Um, it, I saw the first three episodes. I was utterly hooked. I'm really excited about it. Um, so I think you all should tune in. And Mark, you are talking about my other favorite show of the week, I Zombie, which I thought was like zombie charming. It is both. I absolutely <laughs> loved it. It, it is, and uh, you know, before before sort of tackling iZombie, a word for moment on the CW, which is a network that I don't know that anybody would have admitted they watched a few years ago. It just seemed to be like a network for uh, teenage girls. It was the Gilmore Girls Network. It was the 90210 Network. They have very craftily and very sneakily become one of the most successful programmers out there. And now, granted, they only have to fill 10 hours of programming, 8 to 10, Monday through Friday. But they have very slowly built up a nice stable of shows, and they've done it on two fronts. Supernatural shows, uh, the vanguard of that being, guess what? Supernatural. <laughs> and But behind that, they've come in with the Vampire Diaries and the originals. And... Shows based on comic books, mostly the superhero stuff like The Flash and Arrow. That's proved to be quite a potent combination for the CW. And they have been broadening their audience gradually. I, I, no secret, I teach at Kent State University. Um, my students would probably die than admit they watch anything on CBS um, or anything on NBC. But they are now proud watchers of the CW. And they will tell you intimately what's happening on Supernatural or what's happening on The Flash. I think the CW would really like to hear that. That's almost, and here comes a show which has a foot in both those worlds. How smart is that? Let's just start with that. How smart is that? They've got a show which is based on a comic book but has another foot in the Supernatural world. So right there we're starting with a show that's not only very charming, it's also terribly, terribly smart, and it's smart in execution. Um, and the, the, the title, I, Zombie, refers to the character played um, Live More is the name of the character. You know, And so there's an aspect of that of get it, huh? Live More, get it. Well, and uh, Liv is a young medical resident. She's brilliant. Her life is completely in order. She knows great fiancé. She knows exactly where her life is going. She's wonderfully and winningly played by Rose McIver, uh, who was, you may know from Masters of Sex or Once Upon a Time. And uh, she gets invited to a party, and the party turns into a zombie jamboree, and zombies are all of a sudden, and next thing you know, she wakes up as one of the undead, uh, a zombie. And this is not a horror show. Despite the fact that it has this zombie character and a main character, 
it's not quite a horror show. It's not quite a mystery. It's not quite an adventure show. It's not quite a comedy, but it's all of those things built into one. And all I can say is watch it. Please watch it because there's no way we can make this sound as good as it is. You, you, you talk the concept of this thing through and it just sounds, oh, it doesn't sound like it's gonna work. Believe me, it works. Liv takes a job as in the coroner's office in Portland so she can have access to, what's that? It's Seattle, not Portland. Seattle, I'm sorry, yes, you're right. <laughs> Wrong, uh, North <laughs> wrong Northwestern city. It yeah. probably filmed in British Columbia. <laughs> it was filmed in British Columbia. Sorry, keep yeah. going, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a little bit of the Walking Dead this morning myself. So. Sorry about that, Christy. I just, I just uh, had to speak up for Portland. That, you know, thank you, thank you. You're right. Not that there aren't supernatural shows set in Portland, by the way. Uh, <laughs> we, we seem to know a couple. Anyway, um, she takes a job with the Cardinals so she can have access to the brains of john does and jane does the gimmick here is when she consumes the brains she gets memories from the deceased so she can see how they die she has insights into their murders and the two other main characters is her boss the coroner who quickly discovers her secret and wants to help her and once says maybe we can cure this and a new homicide detective a rookie homicide detective who they tell it she is psychic and that's how she is getting these images the byplay but among these three characters is very fresh very funny and this whole show has a real veronica mars feel laid over that comedy and horror stuff and that's no surprise because most of the producers on this show worked on veronica mars so i can't recommend this enough it has a lot of charm as vicky said it has a lot of style it has a lot of humor and yes it has brains so i would i i i, I was surprised delighted and i think anybody who gives it a try will be too well you mentioned veronica mars but there's also buffy there's um, a lot of buffy parallels there and there you are. of course must have been taken one of the um <laughs> One of the arcs of the show is also um, that. Uh... <laughs> Christy's going on a road trip, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I am. I had to get away from that dumb ringing telephone. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Um, is, is that is that Liv is made, is turned into a zombie by the sort of skeevy drug dealer who you know is a zombie, and he comes to her you know in the in, in, in a little bit in the first few episodes, um, trying to you know get some brains from her essentially, and he's he's a very entrepreneurial sort of zombie as it turns out, and they've got this sort of you know very interesting chemistry that reminded me of Spike and Buffy from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and yes, of course it's the white hair, um, that David Anders the actor is sporting in, in the role, but I also really like that. I thought it was like like another element to the show. It's not just the murder mystery. It's it's also this like longer arc, which I thought and was the, great. The entrepreneurial yeah. zombies is something right <laughs> out of Angel too. So, I mean, <laughs> where, where they had the law firm that then everything right. that ran. So there, there are aspects of the show which are reminiscent of other shows, but it's very much its own vibe too. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 after the first one, I thought, okay, how are they ever gonna sustain this? Mm -hmm. But I've seen the first five episodes now, and <laughs> yeah, it's it, it it holds up very very nicely. And and I you know I actually gave the episodes to my wife and daughter, uh, just to, to say, I said I think you're gonna like this. I think you're really really gonna like this. And they they were basically you know, uh, do you have more? Do you, or, or, <laughs> can we see more? No no that's all I have right now. Um, but they're hooked. They're already hooked. This. Yeah, I oh. would certainly, I would certainly agree with both of you guys. I really enjoyed it, and those Veronica Mars and Buffy echoes were certainly there, and those are great echoes to have. Sure. Um, I think the show is really smart, um, and the cast is really good, and it, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, and so I totally agree. It's well worth watching. So tune in, everybody. Um, so hey, yes, Christy, now, yeah. I, I want to ask you a question about Community. Um, yeah. Do you, you know, one of the things that Community always worked for me on was the fact that the core of people were like a comedy team or like the, that, what, like great comedies have great ensembles. And you mentioned how reduced they are. Do you uh, think yeah. that's one of the reasons it seems so? Totally. Well, I mean, it's almost like taking <laughs> some key members of a comedy team out and Absolutely. say, okay, I'll keep going, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, like, just I losing, imagine, I, I, losing them the, really hurts. Yeah. I, I can't yeah. imagine it would. 
Yeah, the chemistry of that ensemble is really what made the show. I mean, obviously, you know, Dan Harmon's very specific sense of humor, which he then, you know, sort of shared with the writer's room. Um, and those performers were great at getting that sense of humor across. But yeah, just sort of seeing, you know, I mean, I like Joel McHale, I like Alison Brie, you know, it's, uh, it's great to see the people that are still there. Obviously, Danny Pudi is still great. Um, but it's just, you just keep missing Yvette Nicole Brown and Donald Glover and, you know, the whole sort of, you know, Donny, you know, uh, the Danny Pudi and, and Donald Glover chemistry was so great that not having it just really hurts. But, you know, like I say, it, it'll be interesting to see how it does. It is kind of an experiment for Yahoo, and I'm, I'm curious to see how, how they do. So, there anyway. They just seemed that they, they would have to be missing. Comedically, yeah. they just would seem to all of a sudden, you know, and yeah. and Vicky on, on on Bloodlines, I haven't seen Frame One yet, but you really got me curious about this now because I'm a sucker for that yeah. kind of thing too. And uh, one of the things that the guys uh, who did Damages, the Kesslers, um, do very well, and it looks like what you're, what you're saying they're doing well is they find great roles for great actors. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, I can't wait to watch every, everything we've <laughs> talked about, um, other than the two episodes of Community that I've seen already. Um, so I think, yeah, I think we're all in a positive mood today. So everybody, these are some shows that are worth your time. I certainly can't wait to see Bloodline. And uh, I've loved what I've seen so far of iZombie. So we're in our happy place today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, so I guess that's it for today. Please join us for the next next TV Coast to Coast, and thanks for watching this one. Bye. Bye. Yep.